Hello community, so great that you're back. Today we have a new learning methodology as published by DeepSeek two days ago. So what is SPCT? And you know what? We try something new. I give you the key takeaways right at the beginning and you decide if you're interested to watch the video because then I'm going to explain in detail what is happening here. So let's start. DeepSeek tells us, hey, we propose a novel learning methodology and they call it a self-principle critique tuning. And this is especially here for inference time scaling or test time compute scaling, you know, those reasoning models. And what is really specific, they built a new generative reward models. Now, if you look at this, you see the most important terms already here in the title, a principle and a critique. And it will be an adaptable principle and a critique that the model will perform to increase its own performance. A self-learning methodology in the inference time scalable learning? Absolutely fascinating. So, this is it. They also give us here the result that they compared here the inference time scaling performance here with a new model and they built this. And remember, this is a specific, just a reward model. And it is based here on a JAMA 2, 27 base. And they tell us, hey, we even experienced with real large with the R1 parameter model size, no? And we found if my 27 billion reward model done right could achieve a better performance compared here to a training time scaling on the model sizes. So if you choose here as a base model for the reasoning a 27B or a 671B, it makes more sense to optimize the inference time scaling and then you can go with a smaller model size. All you need to do is to put a lot of intelligence into your reward model. And this is what DeepSeek has done and they show us here the result. So this is it. Now, if you're interested to understand more about this, I can tell you here an explanation in one sentence. This SPCT is real similar to the Monte Carlo tree search algorithm for reinforcement learning that I showed you in my videos, except there's one major difference that there's no backpropagation like in Monte Carlo, but we have at the end a meta reward model doing here the perfect reward model voting for us. If you're not really sure what I'm talking about, this is a video for you, a reward division language model arm up. Or even simpler here, if we have an R1 and we go here from a language model to a vision language model, this optimization from a step GRPO reinforcement learning methodology, it's explained here in detail. So if you're familiar with Monte Carlo tree search, you say, ah, I understand immediately. If not, don't worry, let's just start and open up the video and we will have a look at this in detail. Now you know for rewards to generate rewards, we have different models and we have in principle three major kind, scalar, semi-scalar and a generative model. Now with the generative model, no, the only general critique as a textual reward from which the reward of value could be extracted. And of course we have again pointwise and pairwise and we look here at pointwise because we want to have individual reward scores like in Monte Carlo tree search. Now the idea of a principle, of an adaptive principle, is not new. We have seen this, for example, here in January 2025 with Entropic. They already showed us here it is kind of possible to boost the reward quality with principles. And they told us kind of handcrafted criteria to guide the LLM to construct safe data pipelines. And now we will apply this to reinforcement learning. So this here, if you want, is the spark of genius here of DeepSeek and Tsinghua University in their latest publication. And they said, okay, how do we generate these principles no, for each specific user query? And they say, okay, we use your GPT-4 Omni to generate the principle and then the pointwise rewards for time for each sample. And then we filter those principles whose according rewards are aligned then with the ground truth. And we only say, hey, this filtered principle, they could, because we just looked here at the best of the best, they can significantly boost here the reward quality and therefore the performance of the complete vision language or large language model. So real nice, but you might say, what is it exactly here, this principle, and how does it reward here? 
this is all that you need, you know. This is everything in one beautiful picture here by Deep Sea Gunjing University. Just want to show you, here is the inference, no? This here is our typical training time, and this here is our test time or inference time compute scaling. So we have here the user input coming in at inference. What we have now, and remember, this is not here a language model. This is just a reward model. This is just here, this specific model that judges here what internal idea of an LLM will be the best way to follow in the causal reasoning augmentation. And it does this, and let's just look at the inference scaling, by principle and critiques. And here we have an example. No? So we have a particular query from the user, and then principle one, this should have a technical accuracy. And we weight this technical accuracy with 30%, saying the response should accurately describe the technical steps in detail, blah, blah, blah. And then we have another principle, the practical implementation. And maybe you have a, a principle about cost-benefit ratio, or whatever principle you like. And then, when we have established those principles, those are our guidelines, how we judge the quality, if you want, here. Then we have here a critique. Now, this is an internal critique, and the model looks just here at the principles and analyzes here the answer. One of the many answers given here by the reasoning model. And it says, hmm, this answer looks good here. Yeah, response two is better than response one, and yeah. So it reasons about the quality. But you know what? We do here a parallel sampling. So our LLM here produces here a lot of principle and critiques in parallel. You can beautifully parallelize in in your computer infrastructure. And here you have another principle, clarity in organization. Maybe the topic that the query that comes in needs something about human value or whatever, I don't know, the quality of living. No? If you go for a mathematical problem, I don't need a quality of living in the principle. So you see, this is adaptive. And that the system learns this in the inference run of course, we have to train those reward models in the test time, not in the test time, but in the training time. So now we go here, up here. So before we have the inference and the query by the user coming in, classical training. What we do, we do a fine tuning and a reinforcement learning. What a surprise. But here, that the system knows here what kind of principle it should apply to a specific query of mine, if I have a mathematical query, here we train the model. No? I give it training data. And I say, listen, if a mathematical problem comes in, you do this. Those are your principles that I wanted you to have in your evaluation report. And then here, the critique here is here. Okay, given the principle, I vote here for this and this and this. Then you extract here the votes. What is incorrect or what is too easy, you just forget about it, you reject it. This is why it's called rejective fine-tuning. So RFT is not reinforcement fine-tuning, but rejective fine-tuning. And then you build your data set for the training data set for the offline training, and you just feed it back. No? Then, then you have your rule-based reinforcement learning. Still in the training process, you are rolling this out. No? And it's the same procedure again. You got here some final reward scores back with some rules, and then you can have an online update. This is the classical fine-tuning and rule-based reinforcement learning that we know, but now only on the reward model. Remember, it is not the language model. And then when, this, when the reward model learned this, when the AI intelligence of the reward model learned this, then we can say, okay, and now we deploy it, now it is operational, and now we can have an inference run with a real user query in real time. And as you see, that whenever the query comes in, we have now parallel sampling. So a lot of things is happening now in parallel. And then we get all the votes in, and then we have more or less two options. No? Either we have a simple majority voting system, where you say, okay, everybody is just voting and everything, we just take the average or whatever, whatever is your voting routine. Or we build here another <laughs> AI intelligence system, if you want here, a meta 
reward model. And now this meta reward model has its own intelligence, has also been trained on a particular domain, let's say mathematics or finance or legal or medicine or whatever, and says, hmm, I look here at the votes and I think this is the best answer. And I will go with this answer. What it does, by having here guided voting with principle generated at scale, resulting in finer grained outcome reward, we have now, because we do so many probing and sampling in parallel, we have now, we explore here the value space, the solution space, with so many trajectories here in parallel, so we can explore here an expanded value space. Value here is our reward integer that comes back, or reward numerical. So this is really interesting, but think about it. It is quite similar to a Monte Carlo tree search with some differences. Yes, of course. But in general, you remember this video where I showed you, again, supervised fine-tuning and reinforcement learning here. Then we have here the inference, and then we have a Monte Carlo tree search was initiated, a classical one. Eh? We were branching out in different options, then branching out again with a final answer, with a final reward signal at the end of the thinking. We fed it back, we had a backpropagation, and now the main difference is here we have no backprop. So if you do not remember this video, it's called AI Agents New Inference Reason at QNet or QLESS, and we built here a process reward model for each and every step in the Monte Carlo tree search algorithm. Very interesting, but this is now real similar, no? Because what's happening now here at the inference is with our SPCT by DeepMind, uh, deep sorry, <laughs> DeepSeek is we just create here not one, but we create here the principle and a specific critique. And then we create another principle, set of principles, and the critique of this in the answer. And we create another different set of principle and a critique of the answer according to those principles. So you see, we don't build here simply a binary tree, but we go here massive parallel. And those principles open up now a wider search space. And the critique has now this opportunity to search in all the quadrants of this search space and not lose some of these spaces. Now, you know, I thought when I did my video on Llama 4, the Maverick, the 400 billion model, and especially it's a mixture of experts, and we have 128 experts. And I thought, you know, this would be an opportunity for Llama, I didn't know. If they would take here this new idea from DeepSeek that was just published two days ago by DeepSeek, this golden set, this, this perfect set of principle and critique, and they are now handcrafted, hand-designed for each of those 128 experts in their specific expert domain. This would really provide here, I think, a reason, a performance jump, because now, let's say, one of those 128 experts is an expert in mathematics, one expert is an expert in financial, mathematics and financial the next one is an expert in physics, in medicine, in biopharma. You get the idea. If you would provide them a starting set with the best principles and the best critique behavior for those principles, I think you could really make sense that you have so many experts here in this new Llama 4 Maverick. It's a 400 billion free trainable parameter model. So here you really would have the opportunity to further optimize, or at least optimize the initial condition for the inference time scaling. Okay, let's come here to the core element. This shift now enables here the principle to be generated based on the input of the user query. So if I have a mathematical query here, the principles will be based here on mathematics. So we have adaptively aligning now the reward generation process and the quality and the granularity of those principles and the corresponding critique based on the principle could be further improved with a post-training here on the reward model. So with the principle generated now at scale, the GRM could potentially output your rewards within more reasonable criteria 
And finer granularity, this will be crucial here for inference time scaling performance as well. So whenever you have a better, more clever principle for your specific task, your critique will be on point, absolutely precise. Therefore, you le need less inference time scaling or test time compute scaling now that you have the user query. Short summary. So we have here our classical test time. Here we have the inference time scaling. So what we have now, at the beginning, we have the rejective fine-tuning, as I showed you, and the rule-based reinforcement learning. And then at the inference time scaling, what we have now, we have two voting options, as I showed you. We have majority voting here with the generated rewards, with the numerical rewards, or you have an own meta reward model that has now a guided voting dependent of the training of this specific meta reward modeling. So if you are working here only in one domain, let's say this is an AI for a hospital, you don't need to train it on, I don't know, English poetry or how to cook a salad. No, you are only in medicine. So this meta reward model, just focusing on medicine, can have so much more deeper understanding than a general model. Yeah, just rejective fine tuning, we talked about it. Here we have a GM to generate principle and critique in the correct format. And of course, you reject the tra trajectories that are not aligned with the ground truth that are incorrect or simply too easy. So you select the best one. And then for the rule-based reinforcement learning, you remember I have here this video where I explained to you the step from GRPO to LCPO for the L1 model by Carnegie Mellon University. Now this is here the same. We use again from DeepSeek from R1 the GRPO here with a rule-based outcome reward. And here the GRM generates the principle and the critique as we know it. So the study itself, I highly recommend that you have a look. April 3rd, 2025, DeepSeek AI, Department of Computer Science and Tech at Tsinghua University and Institute for AI Industrial Research, Tsinghua University. Inference time scaling for generalist reward modeling. The better you get your reward models, the better the performance of the complete system will be. And DeepSeek is showing us here their current work. What is really amazing, you have adaptively aligning the reward generation process to the user query. This is special. So SPCT is different. It teaches you the AI judge to come up with its own relevant principles, specifically for the question and the answer it is looking at. Write your detailed critique based on those self-generated principles and assign scores. And here, as you understand, you can go here in a loop and improve and improve and improve. So as much money you want to spend on your inference time or test time compute scaling, you can really have here an optimized self-learning adaptive system. Real nice. At the end of this video, just a very short summary here. SPCT improves the inference time scalability of our reward models. Nice idea by DeepSeek. And this meta uh, reward model at the end further boosts here the scaling performance in general. In the study, you find hundreds of performance data and tables and graphs showing you here in 0.1 percentage steps here all the differences. If you're interested here in the, in the nitty gritty detail, have a look at the study. Just if you trust me, it's shown it improves here the inference time scalability. So there you have it. Deep seek a new idea like GRPO. Now here, further here on the reward model, on the research boundary of the reward model, absolutely fascinating here, SPCT. If you are interested here in further optimization, especially coming here from our Chinese friend from DeepSeek or Tsinghua University, hey, why not subscribe and I see you in my next video.